Uh, hi folks, uh, sorry for the lighting if uh, my video is not uh, pretty good. So I do not have a good camera, so I'm just working out for, with my headphone. Can I get a thumbs up if, uh, if you can hear me? Thumbs up or a plus one or something like that. Can you hear me? Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, uh, okay, um, it's good we do not have many participants here. We can uh, address questions. Uh, we can address private questions and whoever is there, they can ask their questions on the chat. So while we are here, um, I would like to address certain questions which I have been asked over chats, right? So the first question here is that, uh, what is the status on the referrals which you have been providing us, right? So the point is, I have uh, referred a few people on Tuesday night. And if you have been uh, referred, then you would be getting an email from uh, on behalf of Google. And there they would have next steps mentioned. And I would very much uh, appreciate if you could check your emails if you have not already and follow the steps. You can apply for three jobs if I'm not wrong. Go ahead and do that. So the next thing is, uh, why did not, uh, why did I not receive any emails, right? So the reason uh, you did not receive, we might not have received an email is that uh, you might have sent your resume after Tuesday, the time when I actually referred you, or uh, I referred other people, not specifically you. So that could be one of the reasons. Second reason is. Uh, Google's screening process is pretty, pretty, it's pretty difficult, right? I mean, there's a lot of scrutiny going on around the resumes and they check a lot of things. So I plan to do those things at my end first, right? So I checked your profile, I checked your job descriptions as in um, what you have and your experience. I also asked for your data structure and algorithms uh, profiles and if you have any good projects. Uh, other than that, if you can uh, show me any of your uh, credentials about system design, right? So I asked them, uh, people sent me their profiles, their, their GitHub uh, profiles, the hacker rank, uh, lead code, and everything. Evaluated them. Uh, I checked their uh, current experience, like what they have worked on, what they have written in their resume, and based on that, I've selected uh, people and they have been referred. So if you have not been referred, if you do not receive any email, please do not feel disheartened. Uh, make sure you uh, you know work on your resume a bit. I'll discuss about how we can improve your resume later, and uh, we will also discuss about uh, you know uh, how we can make it more visible, right? And what what are the uh, valid things which we can have on our resume. So yeah, uh, let's move forward. Um, next question, my only experienced professionals, what about the freshers? So the reason, the very reason I'm, uh, I'm going up with uh, uh, experienced professionals and not freshers is because uh, the most of the requirement which we have right now in Google and the, for the roles which I have, uh, I'm, I'm referring is for uh, working professionals who have at least two years of experience. Now, even if you Side, most of the uh, you know uh, mo most of the job listings require at least two years or maybe five years, ten years of experience. So even if I get take your profile and I refer you, there wouldn't be any uh, you know job listing which you may be able to apply to being a fresher. And you know uh, I, I personally, I mean it's my own, in my personal opinion that I usually refer people because so that you know they get a chance to be screened at least by the by our recruitment team right now for freshers it more or less takes the same time if even if you apply through a career site or you apply via referral referral may give some edge i'm not sure about that but it would take more or less less the same time because of the huge uh, load huge volume of 
uh, ref, uh, not ref, sorry, huge volumes, volume of applications which Google gets from freshers. So it's it's you know, it's over the roof. So that's why it takes time. Uh, I mean, maybe, I mean, with or without ref, it doesn't matter much. But yes, if we have any such hiring rise which would be there for freshers, I would certainly post about it in future. Now, the golden question, how do I need to start running data structures and algorithms, right? What do I need to do so that I get better at it? I have been practicing data structures and algorithms for three months, four months, maybe eight months, and still I'm not very much comfortable or I do not feel very uh, confident about it. So what to do? So uh, let me... Uh, uh, let me take you through the process of it and let's see uh, what we can do about that, right? So the first thing which we can do about it is if you are a college graduate, right? I mean, if, if you are still in college, then what I would suggest you to do is learn the basics, right? Uh, learn the things which you actually need. And what I mean, which you, what you actually need is, I mean, uh, you know, Get the foundation right. So for getting the foundation right, I would, I would, I cannot recommend these. I mean, they are they are the bible of uh, data structures and algorithm. And you must have already heard it. If you have not, then the first book is Introduction to Algorithms. That is by Common, uh, Lyserson, uh, and Steen. I, I do not remember all the names, but uh, if you, if you search with CLRS, Google with CLRS. Introduction to Algorithms, CLRS, you will get the book. The book is available in Amazon and Flipkart as well, if I'm not wrong. And order it. Even if uh, on Kindle, you're on Kindle, order it on Kindle. I mean, one of the best books. Uh, I'm still reading it. I still read it whenever I get time. I mean, I could not finish it. I have started reading it for the third time now, but I could not finish it. Unfortunately, but yeah, I have high hopes. I would finish it someday, perhaps this year. Now, uh, the algorithm design manual. So this book is in my uh, bucket list. I have to read this book. I haven't read this book yet, but this is highly recommended book. And uh, you know, while I was preparing for data structures and algorithms for while I was interviewing, I went through several websites and several blogs and th there were several people who recommended this book as well so i would very much uh, also recommend this book and i would say you know go ahead bye the name is the algorithm design manual don't worry if you don't get the name right now um, i'll be posting this video or i'll be sharing uh, this video and i'll be putting all the name all the names uh, in, in the description or somewhere. I, I have to check where we can put all those. I'm, I'm pretty new at this, so please bear with me. Now, let's say uh, you have done these two books, or say you are a working professional. You don't have time to prepare for the, uh, I mean, get the foundations, foundations, or you feel that you already have certain level of foundation. Right, Rohan, that's the name of the book. So you have already got certain amount of foundation. So I would say, you know, go ahead and do cracking the coding interview by, really sorry, I do not remember the name. Uh, so cracking the coding interview, CTCI, um, is a very famous acronym for this. Go ahead, Google about it. You can find it on Amazon, you can find it on Flipkart, you can find it on any other website, eBay it, or whatever, right? Groking algorithm. This is another book uh, that is again in my wish list. I haven't read it, but it is good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, look, guys, you already know what books you have to read, right? So, yeah. Now, uh, again, uh, say if you want to learn the basics and foundations and you do not like books as much, right? So, there is a very, very famous. Uh, I'm not sure if it's famous or not, but I have been through that course a couple of times myself, not completely. Uh, but yeah, 
so there there are data structure and data structure and algorithm courses on MIT open course well. and believe me guys uh, if if you think that uh, if if you think that uh, it is an MIT course and it would be pretty difficult to understand it's not uh their their courseware is you know amazing just just amazing i would say right and you know what uh the way they teach you things is like you're a toddler you don't know, say they would assume that you don't know anything about algorithms from the beginning and they would go ahead and teach you everything about right so go ahead and check out mit open course for data structure and algorithm course right the second thing which i would recommend which you can go through is uh, the data structure and algorithm courses provided by nptel right or we call it nptel so this is uh, this is a surrogate uh, or you can say you know uh, a mirror of mit courses from indian universities i mean top tier universities obviously all the iits are there uh, Uh, we have iisc bangalore as well so the professors from iits and iisc bangalore teach you data structures and algorithms the way they teach in their classes right go ahead and check it out it's good although i found it i mean it, it's just my personal opinion i found it a bit boring a bit slow paced not boring i would say but a bit slow paced i i like my lectures to go fast right even when i'm uh, you know even if i'm uh, listening to them on youtube i prefer to listen to them on 1.25x or 1.5x at least and even if i listen to those nptel lectures on 1.5 or 1.25 speed they still seem a bit slow to me so uh not my i don't like it but if you may go ahead and check it out you might like it right now uh if you are a java enthusiast i mean uh, i have been doing java since past i don't know forever from the very beginning uh coding right because since 2014 i would say so i'm doing java it's been around 7 years now uh for java enthusiast i would say go ahead and do karumanchi amazing book not very hard right and all the examples and all the solutions they provide are in java right so if you do not want to do cracking the coding interview or graphing algorithms go ahead and do karumanchi right it's a good point to start your um, you know data structure and algorithm applications your problem solving skills your if if you want to do uh, competitive programming you know and you want to start from somewhere you want to you know um i would say uh, get your foundations strong and get started i would say go ahead with karumanchi now uh, if you are preparing for interviews uh, just uh, learning and doing certain books might not be sufficient although the books which i have mentioned for just for the working professionals and you know getting ahead and just get those books will provide you a lot of questions there are there are hundreds hundreds of questions in those books and you know it should be sufficient for you but then yeah you should keep practicing so i would say supplement these books with the coding platform there are coding platforms and they are you know they are free so geeks for geeks they have uh, improved their ui a lot you do not have to worry about inputs anymore that's a good thing right interview bit is something i tried i did not know algorithms or data structures at all so i like the way interview bed does it uh, they have divided it into topics and then they do it good but the one thing i lack about interview bed is their discussions and the hints they pretty much suck and most of them most of the hints are not correct or you would not be able to make any sense out of it then we have lead code amazing question bank amazing amazing question bank i would say i mean if you do lead code you would be i would say pretty good now there are hacker i haven't done much of hacker or thor hacker 
I do not remember all the names, but there are a couple of hackers. So you can go ahead and check those out. What they do is they have a pretty, uh, um, you know, uh, different view around data structures and algorithms and problem solving. What they do is they actually give hacker rank, right? Exactly. Thanks. <laughs> so they actually provide you a problem statement, right? So you go through that problem statement and then you solve the problem. It's not a straightforward thing like you get on other platforms, but it is a problem statement. You have to crunch that problem statement into uh, uh, and break that into smaller pieces and understand what exactly do they want from you. So, you know, pretty interesting, but I haven't got a chance to work a lot on hacker rank, but maybe later. Code chef. I haven't done code chef at all. Uh, honestly, I did not know about code chef while I was uh, practicing, and I found uh, lead code and GFG interview bit enough to get my things going. But yeah, I have heard code chef being pretty famous, and I see a lot of posts. I have seen people sharing a lot of uh, profiles about. Code chef, but yeah, go ahead. Now, um, I would answer a few of the questions. How to get better? Uh, how to get better in graphs? I guess there is a question here. In data structures, right? Stars, right? <laughs> so, how to get better in graphs? So, let, let me tell you about one thing about. Uh, so, I, I see a lot of people face problems with backtracking. Uh, recursion, basically. So they face problem with recursion, they face problems with backtracking, PP, graphs, and to certain extent trees. Actually, if, if, if I tell you my view upon it, these you face uh, difficulties in these topics because these topics come much later in your course. Right? You have done a lot of practice around uh, other topics, arrays, strings, and whatnot. And by the time you re reach, uh, dynamic programming or you reach backtracking or you reach graphs which which has an extensive use of backtracking and recursion and dfs and and dfs as well so what happens there is uh, there's a, a level of frustration which we get right? i would say it is it is very important to be motivated but again it is very important to be disciplined while you are practicing data structures and algorithms, because you might, because it, it needs months. Believe me, it needs at least months to get good at data structures and algorithms, right? And even if you are you, you have been practicing it and you are out of touch, like I am right now, so uh, it would take you a couple of months at least to get better. Right? So yeah, give it a couple of months, keep practicing, and you know. Just one more thing about, I would like to make it a bit um, generic, right? So, you know, uh, it's, so just not to cover graphs and BP. So I would say, if I, I, I'm, I'm assuming all of us here who are, have joined in this, in this live chat are engineers. And I'm assuming that we must all have gone through our uh, AIEEE exams. AIEEE was my time, sorry, but yeah, AIEEE who are experienced like I am, old, if not experienced, or JEE, right, JE mains or JE advanced. If you have attempted, appeared for those and you have prepared for those, then you know the kind of frustration and the kind of, uh, you know, things, I mean, kind of practice you need for JE mains and JE advanced. So these interviews might not be that uh, grilling, but they are equally grilling, I would say in my opinion. So what I would say here is that, you know, even then you must have realized that, why am I not able to solve questions? I know the concept, why I'm not able to solve questions. Your teachers must have said, keep practicing, right? The problem solving abilities take time to develop, right? It, it, takes, it, it, it takes time to train your mind to think in a certain way, right? It took my brain uh, to get, you know, it, it takes my brain to be more, uh, it took my brain more time to get, uh, you know, uh, acquaint with those logics and that, that way of thinking because I had, I had no experience of thinking that way at all, right? So it takes time, give your brain that time, yeah, right? Allow it that time 
and you know just go ahead and do it right don't I, i'm not saying just do uh, an hour or a couple of hours, right i would say do your question do your questions practice every day or every alternate day or even if not every day every alternate day if you want you you want more time do it regularly right regularly means any day what you want but have a schedule stick to it do it right and do it till you are satisfied that okay today i have done something and or i'm frustrated i would not want to do it anymore if you get any of those two feelings for that particular day stop move ahead okay so a couple of uh, thing share my resume i would share my resume my resume is not doesn't look pretty good i'm i'm working on my resume as well so uh, i'll i'll share my old resume and once i update it i'll share my um, latest resume as well. those exams were tougher certainly those exams were <laughs> really tough but just comparing for a student j means means everything for uh, software engineers and you know who actually uh, aspire to be in big tech companies uh it's the same kind of exam so we have to do some preparation it's not that fast it's not that difficult but yeah it's the same feeling for me <laughs> now yeah for system design I'll, i'll 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 come to that in some time it's actually i have noted down all the questions in my book and i'll <laughs> i'll be there the the next thing is uh, people ask me uh, what coding language should i be using so the answer to so the answer to that question would be any coding language literally any coding language now talking about system uh, sorry <laughs> talk talking about google uh, you know google or any other organization i would say there are certain languages which are famous there are certain languages which most most of the people work on and who have joined those big techs they have actually uh, worked on those technologies so those technologies include uh, you know java python javascript c++ nowadays go maybe dart someday so these are the languages which are pretty pretty famous and you know there are a lot of people who are actually present in those companies who work on these technologies so one once you have been scheduled for an interview finding that particular interviewer is pretty easier for the recruiter now let's say you are working on some other system or uh, some other um, not system i would say other language say you are working on c sharp so to a company like google or to a company like amazon they are certainly c sharp developers because they have machines they have cloud infrastructure which is work on windows systems right they have to support windows systems internally or externally right so they have to know have that expertise of c sharp or objective c for mac users perhaps however that is the you know the the volume or the number of those people is not enough so uh, that is one of the reasons that if you are choosing any other language it might take you some time to you know for the recruiter to schedule the interview but yeah i should i do not see the be a problem there are languages like ruby on rails or php which are very very rarely used in big tech companies except facebook which uses php or other companies which i am not aware of uh, i guess github Git, github was built on php as well if i'm not I remember it correctly but yeah th there were a few platforms which have been built on php but and ruby on rails i guess github was on ruby on rails i do not remember it please correct me if i'm wrong comment or just message me here itself i do not uh, remember it correctly so but the, again the the number of people who actually interview for those uh, profiles uh, those languages are not uh, are less so you might feel uh, you might get uh, you know um, feel that you, your interview process is being delayed or you are not getting any interview calls itself because of your languages these cases or these thoughts may occur 
So yeah, I mean, I would say if you are choosing going for a language, just go for the languages. Yeah, you know, Python is doing pretty good. JavaScript is pretty doing good. Java beats them, obviously. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, all the languages are good, but yeah, pick pick your poison and just move ahead. Go ahead and do something. Now, one of the one of the questions which I have I have got a lot is, do I really need to know all the libraries? Right. So th this question, I mean, on LinkedIn, I have done certain sessions uh, inside Google as well with our um, uh, candidates uh, uh, who are applying for internships. So they have this question that, do, do we actually need to know all the libraries? I would say no. But while you're doing data structures algorithms, you know what methods those data structures or those things would uh those things would be doing right i mean we know what you know methods would be there we might not know their exact names we might not know their exact syntax uh the interviewer would appreciate that part right they would say okay you you do not know the name you do not know the syntax of that particular method i mean how many argument it takes but if for i mean that that has happened to me in uh, um amazon and google goldman sachs Right. So if you just tell the interviewer that, you know, this should be the method name and this should be the argument, this is what it does. I do not remember its name. It's perfectly fine. No one expects you to know everything. Right. And there are Java docs there. There is Google to help you with when you are at the job. They understand it and, you know, they appreciate it. So, now, uh, the million dollar question how to start system design now system design is something which is um, not asked to freshers or people who have just one year of experience but then um, I, we have noticed that for application engineering interns they do not ask exactly system design but they do ask application design not very different but just different names so a different approach to how you do it so how do i start system design so I mean, about system design, the first thing I would tell you is that, I mean, if you are a working professional, first of all, uh, any system which you're working on, right? Any system, if, even if your application, you know, my application is pretty small. There are just hundreds of users are currently using it. And it's on, uh, it's, it's, it's on legacy system. I do not know what to learn about from it. So perhaps your code base is small, the code base which your team handles. But for an application, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. Learn about them. Why, why certain things are happening? Why a particular system is there? What happens, uh, you know, towards the other side of that system, right? What happens uh, when the user logs in or when the user launches that URL of your application? Right. Start start from the very basics. I'm I'm sure you would learn a lot there. Right. Okay. So first of all, for working professionals, the first step for system design is work about the application which you're working, and that is very 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 important in my opinion. Right. So just go ahead and do that first. Now, for folks who are still in uh, still in their colleges, or they have no idea about how do I do system design, right? I mean, I haven't worked on any large-scale application. I mean, leave large-scale, I haven't done any small-scale application, right? I'm doing data structures, I'm doing algorithms, I'm doing complex programming, but, but most of that can be done in one or two files, one or two class files. I mean, coming from Java background, my, my, my references mostly would be around Java or JavaScript or, or maybe Python sometimes, but yeah. I, I, we mostly deal with, uh, so you may say that just one or two files, two class files are sufficient for us. I mean, we do not work with large scale systems or even medium or small scale systems. For that, I would say, uh, what you need to do is you need to build an application first. Full front end to back end, even if not front end, at least the back end part of it, right? 
use any HTTP protocol you want. Use REST, use GraphQL, use gRPC, use yabba do whatever. Web sockets, you know, whatever you want to use, just use it, build it, right? Create a database, create a schema, try to normalize it. Try to see if you can, if you want to denormalize it rather than normalizing it, right? If you can go to, I do not remember that concept, 1F, 1NF, 1, 2NF, 3NF, I guess. So there are those concepts of normalizations. See if you can apply them. Pure thing, I mean, whatever you learn in your uh, computer uh, science courses or IT courses, right? I'm not sure what, what exactly you learn. I haven't done that myself, but yeah, just try to implement that, right? And go ahead and see uh, what you build. It doesn't have, it doesn't need to be something big. Just first step should be build your application, one application, that's it. You would get a lot of sense around how you should be, uh, you know, creating your REST services, how you should be creating your database design. And while you're doing it, you will learn that you have screwed up a lot of things. So the next time you build it, it would be better. Refactor it, right? See what you have done wrong, refactor it. Make it better. Now, <clears throat> apart from that, I think learning system design is a continuous process in my, in my, in my personal honest opinion, I would say, right? You cannot learn it in one month, you cannot learn it in three months. So what you need to do is, so what you need to do is that uh, you need to keep reading, right? There, there are a lot of articles present. I mean, Google, if, if Google about it, right? Google about NoSQL databases, Google about relational databases and their theories, how they are meant, how, what, what is acid, what, what is base, what is cap, what is base, uh, what, what is base LC, I guess, right? What are these concepts, right? What is what is consistency, right? What is partition tolerance? What is uh, consistent hashing? What is uh, load balancing, right? What, what are messaging queues? What are event buses? How they are different, right? Load balancers, routing, right? Consistent hashing. In-memory caches, right? Pops up, right? Just you know, once you start learning, you would you, you would get a lot. So you would start getting into that rabbit hole, and once you start getting into that rabbit hole, you would start learning a lot of things, a lot of things, right? At certain point, not you would say, okay, I was learning about something else, but now this is a totally different topic. It happens to me all the time, right? So I would say, keep reading, keep reading blogs, keep keep reading about a certain thing even if it's language specific. I'm pretty sure that once you start reading it, you would move. Read about uh, certain concepts which is being used in your application. Perhaps it is a design pattern, a system design pattern which is used, right? Uh, canary environments. It's pretty common in big, te uh, big tech companies having canary environments, right? Then we have switches. Certain companies use switches to turn on and off their uh, functionalities, right? So, A-B testing, right? Th these are very, very interesting topics which you can learn while you're reading and, you know, while you search around them, you read and you see how they're implemented. You find things around it. And they would tell you how they're actually implementing it, how, what problems they faced, right? People discuss about these topics on medium articles. <clears throat> now, this is, a continuous education which you would need to give yourself for getting better at system design. The next thing which I would say is, you know, books. Now, uh, I mean, I cannot, uh, I, I cannot give much more stress upon it, but you know, books are very, very, very important. Right? So, one of the books which I think most of you are, uh, you know, aware of is Designing Data Intensive Applications by Martin Clifton. It, it is it is an it is insanely amazing book, right? I read that book and amazing. So do read that book. 
Now, Enterprise Integration Patterns. Again, a very good book for, you know, the, this, this book, what this book does is it tells you how different applications are actually uh, integrated with each other, right? When, when you're talking about event buses, when you're talking about pops up, like uh, Rivan just mentioned, or when you're talking about messaging queues, right? they cover these topics around why you should use them and how you should use them. And what are the things which you should, what are the caveats? What are the things you should, which you should keep in mind, right? So read this, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. This one is by uh, Martin Fowler. Uh, I mean, Martin Fowler is, uh, Martin Fowler is founder of uh, ThoughtWorks. Amazing person, right? Read, about, read his blogs and before the blogs, read this book as well, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. So it is an amazing book. I didn't get to read it, but yeah, I have read certain parts of it. It is great and very, very recommended book if you are thinking about building an enterprise grade application. Yeah. Read blogs by Martin Fowler. He, he, he's, a, he's a gem of a writer about concepts, right? And he writes, writes those concepts starting from unit testing to building enterprise grade systems, right? Amazing blogs, read his blogs. I mean, I read those blogs whenever I get time. Now, uh, some of the folks uh, who are not into reading much, right? Like I do not feel about reading when I'm going to sleep. I, I think, I mean, watching a YouTube video for a 20, 30 minute video is enough, right? So go to YouTube, right? Uh, search uh, tech talks around system design, right? I mean, <laughs> Google about it. Right? You would find a lot of tech talks present on YouTube. Tech talks by uh, people in Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg has a tech talk around Facebook. Um, it, it's, it's, an, it's an old talk, but Mark Zuckerberg talk, talked about their systems. Right? Uh, people like, um, uh, uh, you know, people from Slack, people from uh, Uber, people from uh, you know uh, Reddit. They, they they talk about their system design, right? And people like you know um, from Google, if you know uh, that Jeff. Let me. Uh, I, I do not remember his completely. Let me just check for it. Jeff Dean, right? Jeff Dean, if if. If you have heard about Jeff Dean, Jeff Dean is uh, referred to a god of uh, God. He, he is giving a level of, you know, position of God for software engineers. Right? So, I mean, just, uh, just search about Jeff Dean memes. Uh, you would get a Quora post and and that, that, that that's hilarious, right? Just give it a read if you have time, sometime, if you have time. Amazing person. You get you would get talks by Jeff Dean as well. He talks about I guess it it is a talk in MIT where he talks about how are they actually maintaining their servers and how how they struggled with building Google search. He was the main guy, uh, not the main guy I would say, but one of the main guys who were there while Google search was being developed. Right? When Google was just Google search and they were you know, growing up, Jeff Dean was the person now, and, and and I guess right now he is head of Google Brain. So amazing person, MapReduce. If you have heard of Map, MapReduce, Jeff Dean, Big Table BigQuery, Jeff Dean. So I mean, I I can talk a lot about about that guy. So yeah. Now, low level design. Uh, many companies ask low-level design. So when I mean low-level design, I guess um, we call it machine coding round, right? So yeah, machine coding round is currently taking off in many companies. I guess Flipkart does machine coding and there are certain other companies which do machine coding as well. So from, uh, for that, uh, you need to have strong low-level design, right? Uh, how to have strong low-level design? So, you know, uh, for having a strong low-level design, you have to know the design patterns which those which are present in a language. Right? 
they are plenty single builder factory factory method abstract factory right uh, many more i do not i, I do not remember them but yeah immutable classes there, there are many patterns there are many concepts around yeah singleton right uh, serialization deserialization when using single right so there, there are many many such uh, concepts which are there in design patterns so you need to be good at those they would be testing you on those right uh, multi threading concurrent programming asynchronous programming there is a different difference in concurrent asynchronous programming so learn about them multi threading multi process programming perhaps right so multi process programming if you are working with python you can do multi process programming as well you should know when you should do uh, when you should choose between multi threading and you should choose between multi processing right there is a fine line between multi threading and multi processing you should know about those things right, right. so <clears throat> again all all of these things are available on medium youtube just google about it right? you would find a lot of uh, material now <clears throat> i have certain books which i have referred uh, not all of them but yeah they are in my bucket list uh, so the first one is uh, effective java amazing book it's written by joshua block i mean Uh, if you if you work in java and you go to and you check java libraries there are uh, certain libraries which have been not certain i would say there, there are a lot of libraries which have been written by uh, joshua block so he has worked in sun he has worked in google and i'm not sure where he is working right now but he is a superstar in java code complete by steve mcon it's a bit old book but very very relevant till now programming pearls by john bentley i guess it is again a very good book i would recommend it read it whenever you have time and effective python effective python is again it's it's a good book right if you are python enthusiast go ahead and read it for for javascript i would say i mean if you want to have good design, honestly i I have coded a lot on JavaScript and TypeScript, but you know, um, I, I do not feel that the way we implement certain concepts in JavaScript or TypeScript. I haven't worked in TypeScript much, but the way we implement our concepts in these languages is pretty loose, right? Because uh, JavaScript says that I would not show exceptions. Okay, please repeat about. after effective java if it, after effective java it's first is code complete code complete c o d e c o m p l e t e code complete third is programming pulse programming pulse fourth is effective python really good books so uh, ah yeah. i'm i'm a bit opinionated about in javascript uh, it's it's an amazing language but i find it find it a bit you know i, I struggle a bit in in implementing certain design patterns in javascript so i mean could be me i mean but uh, i have an inclination towards dart so uh, dart is again um, a google language and i find it really amazing because I, i'm a guy who comes from java background and it dart seems very close to java to me i mean typescript uses it as well but then typescript allows javascript uh, as well so i mean either you types or don't i mean do something about it right so whereas dart says go use types it's better to use types so i'm pretty comfortable with using types and if if you want to learn more around uh, my so <laughs> raven says reading blogs or books is fine you might get lost after a while doing so how do i get hands on and be interview ready for hld nl to the point <laughs> so for hld i would say i mean i, I do not know many good 
resources for LLD to be honest because I haven't practiced LLD. What I what I really do around LLD is I build my own tools, right? Uh, I have built tools around uh, uh, tools around messaging queues, which I have used uh, internally in our uh, in our organizations. I have built tools around uh, you know uh, crawling code bases. In, in, in your file system itself, finding certain elements in those code bases, right? I have I have created tools. Um, I do not remember it right now, but yeah. So keep creating tools, small tools, right? You would get a lot of experience uh, about coding, about doing clean code, and you know, like I say, if if you look at your code after three months and you don't think it is shit, you're not learning. Pardon my language. If you don't think it's bad, uh, assume that you're not learning. So make sure that you always revisit your code after a few months, a couple of months maybe, right? After a month or a couple of months and see if you can improve something, right? And if you can improve something, it means you're learning and it's a good thing. So keep coding, LLD. And I guess there is a good resource online, uh, Work at Tech. Uh, the guys at work at tech they have they have an article where they have mentioned certain um, applications you can build using uh, just using for the machine learning rounds and there are other youtube content creators who are you know uh, aggressively creating content content around machine coding rounds right so go ahead they, they, you can create a chess you can create um, a messaging queue uh, for asynchronous programming, you can create, uh, I don't know, I mean, a game of Ludo, snakes and ladders. You can create um, a parking lot. Parking lot designers, you know, uh, people use that question for testing your oops concepts. So, you know, just check. I would say, Google it. So, you know, uh, Google interview process. What kind of questions are asked in Google? Uh, so, Google interview process is, again, uh, I would say from, from, from a perspective of uh, from a SWE and AE perspective, because uh, I've given interview of AE. I, have, I take AE interviews. I take SWE interviews. So, the point here is that Think of a thing from a from an interviewer's perspective here, right? So what I would say is, you know, practice all you can. Practice all you can. Don't don't get leave anything to doubt. You know, the interviewer can ask you any question. They can be test. They they actually test n number of things apart from coding as well, right? So even if you are not able to code it. If you tell, even if you code it partially, you may get selected. Even if you give right approach, you code it well, you might not get selected. So th th there are multiple things happening behind the scene. So think from a, think from an interviewer's perspective, right? I, I will I will discuss uh, a bit more around interviewing and um, how the psyche of an interviewer and how we should actually have what psyche should we have while we're interviewing. It's a long topic. I do not want to waste a lot of your time. We have already taken 50 minutes of your time. So, for uh, Google Google's interview, I would say that you know, uh, think from an interviewer's perspective and think that what are the kind of questions which I can do within 40 minutes. That's it. If you can do a particular question in 40 minutes. What uh, I'll, I'll I'll come to that. Uh, if you think that you can do a question in forty minutes, then that's the question you should be practicing, right? Just go ahead and do those kind of questions. If you think that the question is too challenging, right? too much challenging, don't leave that question. Even if you're not able to answer, even if you're not able to solve that question, try to get how that question is being approached, right? Because once the interviewer gives you a simple question or the question which you can solve within 40 minutes, they can give you a follow-up question. 
say for 10 minutes what, where they want to discuss about what you would do right and if you can even code it you you are a superstar right so you know while starting focus on questions which you think they can be solved in 40 minutes right? that is the base. i mean i, I consider it, right? i mean I, i i took this formula from while i was preparing for my uh, entrance exams like if i can solve it it wouldn't be asked you know <laughs> I, i know i mean it, it's it's pretty silly to think like that but yeah so from from that perspective if you if you can solve a question for uh, 40 minutes just consider that question can be asked or a variant of that question can be asked right so keep practicing for hld for for hld i would say you know how do you get confidence around hld high level high level design the basic thing i would say is once you are reading all these things all these blogs and everything right talk to yourself that that's what i do i mean talk to yourself how would i design whatsapp how would i design slack how would i design telegram how would i design book my show that that's a that, that, that's a very you know uh, hello world kind of a case for uh, system design design book my show right how would i design uh, an an airline booking system a restaurant booking system perhaps or a library management system or uh, you know uh, netflix i don't know just talk to yourself you don't have to you don't have to be perfect these are open ended questions they do not expect you to design those systems in 40 minutes which took hundreds of uh, you know uh, human hours to build literally hundreds of human hours if not thousands of hours don't worry it's an open ended question you can be wrong but make sure when you are wrong you have something to defend it right you have the concepts clear if you read if you watch youtube and you listen to talks you would know the concepts behind any of the decisions taken you can say that we are taking this decision because of this reason no one is incorrect no one is correct it's all very 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 subjective you just should be able to defend your answer whatever answer you're giving that's it all right how important is text text stack like if someone is python text stack doesn't matter at all right believe me when i joined google i had around 5 years of experience and when i started coding in google i felt that i don't know anything i mean i felt like a toddler who is learning to start coding so that would be there in most of the tech companies i'm sure i mean at least in companies like google and facebook who have a lot of their internal tooling a lot of their internal frameworks everything right although having tech stack where a particular tech stack would give you an edge say a particular team works on a particular tech stack they can they certainly can right and they might be looking for a person who has some familiar familiarity with the tech stack so you can get an edge but that wouldn't be the deciding factor for you. i mean that wouldn't be the shortlisting factor for sure i mean that could be the deciding factor but not the shortlisting factor definitely right so tech stack doesn't matter much what kind of project you are so what kind of project you have built what kind of work you have been doing impact you have been creating that depends that depends the most in my opinion right. now how do i get my resume shortlisted that is again a very 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 uh, frequently asked question to me so uh, th- there is no particular mantra of how to get your resume shortlisted even i don't know how to get my resume shortlisted right the same resume which did not get shortlisted in any of the companies got shortlisted in amazon goldman sachs google uh microsoft as well i did not get a chance to interview with them but yeah so it's very very subjective so there is no thumb rule around how we should be building our resumes right? but what you should be doing you should not be mentioning that i built a system 
uh, I built a system uh, which manages user journeys or by which user can create orders. So what? Anyone who can code can do it. You did it. Fine. So what? Doesn't matter. Right. I mean, it does matter. You built it. That's I mean, I appreciate it. But everyone is doing it. How are you different? How building your that system made brought any difference in in the company? Right. So I mean, you can embellish it like. Uh, enabled users to do this uh, we have doing this enabled these many users to do this this helped us change our supply chain or this helped us track our user uh, records or you know how, how did it make an impact how did it help you build something that's good but how pardon me for that I'm really, really, really sorry. Really sorry for that. So yeah. So how how did it create an impact, right? And so and give some metrics. Throw in some metrics, right? So uh, if if uh, I'll I'll show you my updated resume. So I'll I'll show you my resume and I'll I'll show you there are certain points. Uh, which has certain metrics in it. Right? Now, there have been questions from service-based uh, employees and service-based companies that you know we did not get anything uh, which has such impact. We just work on small changes, small bugs, and that's it. What should we write? True. I have been in that position. Uh, you could not write anything, but you know, I mean, if you have been doing something impactful. Right? I'm, I'm assuming if you're aiming for Google, you must have been doing something. I mean, just not Google, any of the big techs, right? You you must have done something good in your project, I'm assuming, right? And if you have done something good, it means you must be owning that particular area, a particular module, at least that file where you made that change, right? You're owning something. Put that. That owned this module, owned these journeys, right? Enabled. Uh, users, uh, you know, fix user bugs, uh, these many bugs, or say 100 bugs uh, every month, right? Or 10 bugs every month, or improved user journeys while leading, while owning this particular module. Put such things, right? Make sure they're honest because you might be asked questions around them, right? So make sure. Those are honest. Maybe with, with a little pinch of salt, but make sure it's honest. I hope you understand what I mean. Right? So that that that, that is how you should get your resumes uh, shortlisted. Now, personal projects. Honestly, uh, I have got a lot of resumes talking about, you know, I have pretty much a lot of ML projects, a lot of projects with a lot of jargon. I couldn't understand half of it. If I can't understand, I am a technical person, I can't understand. How would a recruiter who is non-technical uh, would understand that probably, right? I mean, think from a recruiter's perspective, you are writing huge things in that particular part. Even if he's a hiring manager, they might not know all those terms. Right? They just might not. Give them a benefit of doubt. So write them in a very, very simple format. If you want to show your knowledge that, look, these are the things which are used, right? Put them in a bracket and line them up. But when you're explaining your project, the impact of your project, you know, the benefits of your project, you should keep them very, very, very simple. Don't make them, don't make it hard for the other person to understand it, right? Just to make yourself feel smart. Or maybe you do not have that particular you know, idea in mind, or you could not have that particular direction, but you know, the other person might not, just might not understand. So, Rohan asked me one question. He's a fresher, he's from biotech. He has done DSA, oops, 
uh, he is confident around them. so but then what are the chances of freshers and they obviously well and it's not just him they they have been so i have had a session with rohan and the friends at dtu and we talked a bit around uh this topic itself right so i can understand that it can be a bit uh, difficult for freshers to get job at big techs and especially i get a lot of uh, messages from tier 3 uh, tier 3 colleges that we do not have uh, that uh, we do not have that exposure companies do not hire us what we should, what should we do look you can complain about it how much i mean any amount of any amount of what, what whatever you want to do i mean you can complain that google or amazon or uh facebook they do not or netflix or whatever uh unicorns we have they do not consider tier 3 con- uh, com- uh, colleges but that's the truth all the google amazon they do not consider colleges much to be honest but still there can be biases right we cannot we, we cannot say that there are no biases there can be biases and that's the truth right so rather than complaining about it or being sad about it i would say that's that, that's the truth what not, what else we can do about it right so i would say keep applying first thing is keep applying i mean while i i have been looking i have changed my job twice and believe me i have applied like anything right and the amount of interview calls i have received till now is maybe 10 to 15 combining the two times i have been tried to search jobs maybe 10 to 15 not more than that for sure and i have applied hundreds of at at hundreds of startups angel list nokri monster i mean linkedin everywhere right i have applied everywhere i have i pinged uh, uh, recruiters right i've pinged them on linkedin i've pinged them on whatsapp right i do not bug them this i i write my resume i write a, i do a cover letter kind of thing i write my resume that's it and i have been ghosted by many of the recruiters i mean we have to understand their standpoint as well they receive such messages hundreds of such messages every day so if you can't if if you can't get the those uh, if you can get their attention but the, the first message or your resume you can they have to fill the hundreds of resumes every day they can they literally cannot give you more than 2 minutes on your resume so make sure your resume is one page make sure you highlight your points right it's not there for perhaps few of the, them are at fault but few of us are in fault as well because we did not make it easy for them people did not make it easy for me either while i was referring people right they do not make it easy for them so the point is make it easy for them make it one page okay you don't need a resume more than one page even if you need it for more than one page make sure there is some meat in that resume right i mean your work ex has some thing to mention about if it's two page Uh, uh, let, let, let me give you a, give you a reference of one article i was reading while i was preparing my resume my resume was seven pages believe me when when i was trying to switch from thesis it was seven pages i showed it to my friend she laughed <laughs> okay that's it i mean she laughed i can't say what else she said but yeah she laughed so what is it was so what i read in that article was that 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 person said i have 11 years of experience i have visited seven countries three continents and i still cannot make my resume more than uh, of more than one that struck me i mean i have i've certainly not done much i mean i've just what 2.5 years of experience back then i can certainly make it for one page i made it one page and i still try to ma- keep it a one page remove all the irrelevant stuff whatever you have done right you have done a lot of stuff 
everyone knows people work when they are in office people work there when they are working in a in an organization we know that everyone works what is it that you have done which has made a difference the recruiter and the hiring manager wants to know about that for freshers what did you do in your internship what impact did it bring what what project did you make for your college what impact did it bring what i'll talk about elon musk uh what what personal projects you have and what impact does it have right? freshers can also do personal projects open source projects everything i mean everything counts right every every bit of amount you put there counts obviously data structure algorithms that's the baseline but then you know you, you have to uh, you know bring your resume half a page up at least with each of us now elon musk has one page resume so elon musk can have one page resume you know he can have a blank resume and say i am elon musk <laughs> that's fine but obviously he has done a lot of stuff and he has kept it in one page that that's certainly commendable but you know uh, we cannot compare ourselves with elon musk right now because like i said he can just give a blank page with a with his name written on it elon musk and people would certainly like to interview him all right i, I guess uh, that's all which which i have from my end. At, at last i would just say that you know keep practicing keep doing it don't lose hope people lose hope i lost hope i talked to people if you are losing your hope talk to me ping me on linkedin right if you, if you feel i mean we can have we can have a chat there right if you feel down right so keep practicing don't lose hope talk to your friends talk to your mentors that's it any final questions i hope i have answered all your questions from the chat as well while i was answering the other questions because they were pretty much similar any other questions Hey, please reply, Madiha. I have got an invitation mail from Google Recruitment, recruiting that some people has referred me, and I have to apply for three jobs and in one month of time. So, what if they don't have openings to the job I want? Ah. Huh. Well, um, you have to ask them to refer you again. There's not nothing much you can do there. so once they have referred you there is a so there is a scheduling system which works and it invalidates everything after one month so if they can refer you again that's fine slightly different topic do you want to anything on negotiation dude i'm i'm really bad at negotiation to be very honest i'm i'm really bad at them don't ask me a e versus sweet so for a e versus sweet i'll i'll put uh, i'll put a youtube link here so uh we had a we had a official uh, so that link if if you uh, scroll through my posts there's a youtube video that help on it uh, along with other googlers and we have we are talking about what is the difference between a and c uh there is certain fundamental differences in just in fundamentals right but the kind of work which we get is not very very different or the kind of uh, tools we use are not very different i'm talking about a generalist a i'm a generalist a and a suite there are certain specific cases like salesforce sap their work is a bit different I, i'm i'm not very much um, aware of their work but yeah it is a bit different any other questions I hope not. Cool. Just for thanks a lot, guys, uh, for being cordial. It was my first session, which which I which it is my first YouTube session. I mean, personal YouTube session. I have done one YouTube session with Google, but this is my first in live session. And I hope I was able to answer some of your questions or able to 
you know, clarify some of your doubts. So I would say, I mean, thank you for being so cordial. And you know, if I've done any mistakes, uh, if I did something wrong, please pardon me for that. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I mean, welcome, guys. I mean, I'm 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 always ready to help you. Okay, I might be swamped sometimes with my work. And see you guys again on LinkedIn. Bye. Bye.